Okay, so um, for this video, we are going to discuss the question from paper 5, which is the probability and statistics one, um, for May June 2021 paper and paper, the variant paper 52. Right, so for the first question here, you can see that they are telling us we have the ordinary fair die, and then it is thrown repeatedly until a 5 is obtained. Alright, so um, every time we see the sentence, something like this, uh, until something happen, until you obtain something, or until something appear. Alright, so this kind of question, generally, it belongs to a special type of distribution, which is a geometric distribution. And from the geometric distribution, you need to know a parameter value, which is the P. Okay, so it depends on what do we have it here. Uh. A 5 is obtained. All right, the probability of obtaining a 5 from a fair die, so the probability will be 1 over <coughs> 6. All right, okay, so from here, first of all, you already know, all right, it is belongs to geometric progression, uh, sorry, geometric distribution, and the parameter is 1 over 6. All right, okay, so they want you to write down the <coughs> mean of x. Okay, so to get the mean of x, which is the ex, uh, Alright, so for the EX of geometric progression, the formula will be 1 over P. And you should know that this is your P, 1 over 6 is your P, right? It is the parameter. Okay, so 1 over 1 over 6. And therefore, the mean that we get should be equal to 6. Alright, so first of all, you need to know that this question belongs to geometric distribution from this keyword this expression until something is obtained or until something appears. So generally, it will belong to geometric distribution. Alright, so after this, <laughs> we go to part number two, part B. Okay, so for part B, okay, so find the probability that a 5 is first obtained after the third throw, but before the eighth throw. So that means uh, you obtain the 5 after the, first, uh, the third throw. So after the third throw means more than 3. Uh, so the number of throw will be more than 3, but before the 8th throw. So before the 8th throw means smaller than 8. Alright, so after will not include the third throw. So that means you didn't see any um, equal sign here. Alright, and also the word before doesn't include the 8th. The eight row. So you can see that here I also didn't include the equal sign. Alright, so for <coughs> x equals to uh, x is between 3 to 8, and it is a discrete distribution. <coughs> that means you need to have um, x equals to 4. Okay, what are the integers between 3 and 8? So x equals to 4, x equals to 5, x equals to 6. <coughs> <clears throat> and also x equals to 7. Alright, so you should substitute in the prop, uh, the, the formula here. Alright, so x equals to 4. Means that for the first 3 throw, you didn't get the 5. So the probability of didn't getting a 5 is 5 over 6. Alright, 5 over 6, but for the first 3 throw, so you didn't get the, what, uh, the 5. Okay. For three throws, it will be 5 over 6, multiply with 5 over 6, multiply with 5 over 6. So which is the power 3, 5 over 6 power 3. And the fourth throw, you get the 5. So it will be 1 over 6. <clears throat> okay, so same thing happened for the next one. When x equals to 5 means the first four throw, you didn't get the 5. So the probability will be 5 over 6 power 4. And then... The fifth throw, you get the 5. So it will be 1 over 6. Alright, so the same thing happened for x equals to 6. And also x equals to 7. Alright, so I make a mistake here. If this one should be a 6. Okay, alright, so therefore, if you try to press the calculator and then try to obtain the answer in three significant figures, it will be 0 0.300. Alright, so um, just a reminder for in case for those who already forget the formula, 
for any geometric distribution, right, if you want to get x equals to r, the general formula will be q power r minus 1 multiplied with p. Right, so you can see that we apply this formula in all our example here, x equals to 4, x equals to 5, where your r equals to 5 for this case, 6 and also 7. Alright, so this is how we get the probability for this question. Okay, so next we continue to the third part, part number C. Okay, so for part number C, they are asking you to find the probability that 5 is first obtained in fewer than 10 troops. Alright, so when they mention fewer than 10 throws, the general formula here, when you write it out, it should be the number of throws should be less than 10. Okay, alright, so um, again, because this is actually the discrete uh, random variable. <coughs> okay, so generally, um, you should start from when they're asking for x smaller than 10. Okay, our calculation should include x equals to 1 and then x equals to 2 and so on until x equals to 9. Because for this question, they're asking for fewer than 10 throws. So fewer than, that means will not have, will not include the 10. Right, so you didn't see any equal sign here. So that means we want to calculate the x equals to 9, the term until x equals to 9. Okay, all right. So um, there, are, there are two ways to solve it, yeah, for, to solve this question. So first step is I will try to write out the formula here. For x equals to 1 means that you throw, the first throw, you already get the 5. So the probability is p, which is 1 over 6. Okay, so for the second term, Alright, so x equals to 2 means that you first throw, you didn't get the 5, so which is 5 over 6, and the second throw, you get the 5. Okay, and then after that, maybe for the third throw, if you want, uh, x equals to 3, you will have 5 over 6 power 2, and then 1 over 6. And the formula continue, and you can see that the power increase slowly until x equals to 9. So x equals to 9 means that you are having the first 8 throws didn't get the 5 and the last row you get a 5. Okay, so generally this is the formula that I have. Okay, and when I go through with all this formula here, I will realize that actually every single term in my solution, there's 1 over 6 appear inside. Can you see the 1 over 6 here in every single term? So for me, I will take out the 1 over 6, right? Of course, if you write out the formula already, then you want to press calculator to get the answer, then you can you can try it. Okay, but to me, I think this is a bit too long, right? So I will, I will want to see whether got shorter way, okay, to get the answer or not. So from here, I see that I can take out all the 1 over 6. And then uh, once I factorize out the 1 over 6, right, the first term, I'm having 1. For the second term, I'm having 5 over 6. For the third term here, I'm having 5 over 6 square. And all this continue until the last term, or maybe I can say that it is the ninth term, which is 5 over 6 power 8. All right. Okay, then now, if you realize, okay, if you can observe clearly, then you can see that the expression in this bracket itself actually is a geometric progression or geometric series, uh, right, geometric progression, where you can see that it is a GP, where the A is equal to 1, all right, and the N is, oh, sorry, the R. Okay, the common ratio. So the common ratio is actually 5 over 6. <clears throat> Alright, and how many terms do you have here? So you have 9 terms here where n equals to 9. So this is actually a geometric progression with all the details like this. Alright, so to get the summation <coughs> of or maybe the total answer for this part, uh, 
I can apply the geometric progression, the sum of geometric progression, where the first term is A, the formula is A, which is 1, okay, then 1 minus R power N, so 1 minus R power N, so my N is 9, divided by 1 minus R, so 5 over 6. Alright, so I'm using the formula of S9, which is equals to A power 1 minus R power N divided by 1 minus R. Since I realized that it is a geometric progression, okay, so um, by just trying to press the calculator, you should be able to get the final answer, which is 0 0.806. All right, so this is actually method number one. Where you want to find out the, the terms and the certain terms for x smaller than 10. All right, so you can try to involve your calculation by using the geometric progression, the sum of geometric progression, and you can get the answer. All right, then uh, actually we have another method, which is method number two. And method number two is much more shorter. All right, you can straight away apply a formula for x smaller equals to r. All right, so for x smaller equals to r, when they try to simplify everything, okay, in general um, formula, they get 1 minus q power r. Okay, so this formula is much more shorter, of course, if you want to apply it. But when you want to apply, you have to ensure that the sign here is smaller equal sign, and then to apply the formula, the value R into your formula here. Okay, so let us try to apply part number C by using this formula. Okay, so we are we want to have the probability of X smaller than 10, but please take note that the smaller than 10 here doesn't include the 10, right? There's no equal sign. So to use this formula, I try to rewrite my symbol into the smaller equal sign. So smaller than 10 means that it is smaller equals to 9. All right, so the formula will be 1 minus, what is the Q? Q is 5 over 6 because your P is 1 over 6, right? So Q means 1 minus P, right? All right, so 5 over 6 power R. So your R is a 9 here. And if you press the calculator, of course, eventually you will get the same answer in three significant figures, which is 0 0.806. All right, so... Of course, this method is much more shorter if you're able to remember the formula. Okay, so where Q is equals to 1 minus P. Alright, so for me, myself, usually I will use this uh, because I, um, most of the time, I'm not able to memorize this. Okay, although it is much more shorter. So what I do is like, uh, I will usually try to link it with the geometric progression for the sum, sum of geometric progression. Alright, so if you don't like this method, then you can choose to memorize the general formula. Okay, but please make sure that it must be always written in smaller equals to half form. Alright, so this is what we have for the question number one. Okay, so um, let's come to question number two. Alright, so um, they are talking about the weights of bags of sugar are normally distributed. So I think the normally distributed is a very important keyword. So once you see this keyword normally distributed, it generally tells you that it is normally distribution. All right, it is a normal distribution question. And then the mean given is 1.04. Standard deviation is sigma. All right, then um, in a random sample of 2,000 bags of sugar, 72 weight, more than 1.10 kilo. So find the value of sigma. All right, so from this question, generally the very first information that you get is x is normally distributed, the mean is 1.04, and the standard deviation is unknown. So it will be written as sigma square. Okay, then uh, 72 weight more than weight means the x, all right? So the number, the, the weight of the x more than 1.1 kilo is equals to, what is the probability here? 72 out of, 72 out of 2,000. So it will be equals to 72 over 2,000. So that's the probability actually. And this is a very, uh, important information uh, that they give us okay, to start to calculate or to get the sigma. Alright, okay.
Okay, so first of all, of course, you need to continue with this part. Okay, so this is the x and we know that it is normally distributed. Therefore, we should convert it become a z. So how can we change become z? So you should take 1.10 minus the mean divided by standard deviation, right? So this is how we standardize it. Okay, so what is the mean? So the mean is 1.04. So you have to minus 1.04 and divided by sigma. The standard deviation you don't know, lah, so you just write it as sigma. Okay, so from here, actually you get the probability. So 72 over 2000, you'll get 0 0.036. Alright, so we need to find out what is the correct value for this um for this z here. Right, so there are many ways for you to solve it. Okay, so generally for me, what I will do is like I'm going to draw a simple graph, the normal distribution diagram. Okay, and then from here, because this probability is a small area, any area less than 0 0.5 is small area. And the greater here, okay, tells me that this is the diagram. This is how the diagram look like, right, the area look like. So this area is 0 0.036 and generally, this value z is actually 1.10 minus 1.04 divided by sigma. And I want to know what is this <coughs> value actually. Okay, alright, so maybe I will just denote it by using a letter A. Alright, or maybe a letter z, up to you. Okay, so now I want to find out the letter z from the normal distribution table. And then uh, after that, I want to equate it with this uh, expression all right okay so how can i get the value of z from the normal distribution table all right so this is how we do it okay so we are having a normal distribution table here all right so maybe i want to make it slightly smaller okay so now let's have a look for the probability here so the probability is 0 0.036 so all the probability will be expressed in this part and you realize that there's no and there's not, none of the value is smaller than 0 0.5, right? And we want to get the 0 0.036 from this part, all right? So the only thing that we can do is that we have to find out the matching okay, area with 0 0.036. So for this 0 0.036, because it is not appear or it is not written inside this probability area, okay, so the matching area is actually 1, minus 0 0.036 all right so when you want to check for the value okay uh, you will get 0 0.964 okay so that means instead of 0 0.036 uh, to get the value of z i will look for 0 0.964 okay from our table right so where is the 0 0.964 so i'm going to look for the value okay close to 0 0.964 okay so 964 might be somewhere here i think because i'm having 9633 here okay and then i want to make it become 964 that means i need to add a 7 all right at the last digit so when i want to add the 7 this is the 7 here all right so if you want to check the value for jack you have to look back from the table, what is this? This is 1.79 and uh, followed by the digit 8. All right, so you will have z, which is equals to 1.798. All right, and then from this diagram, you can see that the z is on the right hand side of 0. The middle line here, the mean is 0, right? Okay, so from here, you know that this is actually a positive value. So, which means that I will keep my answer here, 1.798 as a positive value. All right, so here, I will let z. So, what is the z? 1.10 minus 1.04 divided by sigma. And it is equals to 1.798.
all right and then from here you can get the value of sigma very easily and if you didn't do any careless mistake then you should get 0 0.334 all right, so this is another, this is how we do it lah for this question. And of course, um, for this question, uh, to get the 1.798, there are many, many different ways. Uh. Some some might use um, formula method. All right, they try to rephrase everything into z smaller than a number and so on. There are many, many methods. All right, so this is the method that I show you here. Okay, so our answer for sigma will be 0 0.0334. Okay, so um, we come to question number three. Alright, so um, they are talking about on each day that uh, Alexa goes to work, right? The probability that she travel by bus, train or car are these values. Huh? And then they also show that travel by bus or travel by train or by car. Okay, what is the probability that she arrive late? So there are two, um, two stages here. If you can see two pro process here, lah. if you look at the question, generally the first process is um, the first stage is the method that she travels to work and the second stage is we are looking for whether she is late all right or not okay when she used the method okay the particular method to go to work all right so if let's say for this kind of probability question generally we will it will be very helpful if we use the tree diagram okay to help us okay then um, on a randomly chosen day when uh, Alexa goes to work, the probability that she does not arrive late is 0 0.48. Okay, so they want to find the value of x. Generally, for me, I will um, try to draw a tree diagram to help me okay, to overview the overall picture clearer. All right, so like what I mentioned just now, we are having two stages here. The first stage is by the method, okay, to go to go to work. Uh. So we are having three methods here by bus. All right. And then the second method is by train. And the third method will be by car. Okay. And the probability for respective methods here will be 0 0.4, 0 0.35, and also 0 0.25. Alright, then now we go to the second stage. Uh. We want to investigate and see whether by using each method here, whether she will be late to work or not. Alright, so by bus, there are two outcomes. We may, might have late and not late, okay? Alright, so for the <coughs> train also the same. We are having the late and also not late. Same thing happened for the car. And we try to fill in all the probability. <clears throat> Alright, so now for, for the bus, okay? When she travels by bus, the probability that she arrives late is 0 0.55. So this is 0 0.55. And for each branch, the total, the each branch, the total should be equal to 1, right? So if let's say the late is 0 0.55, then not, not going to be late is 0 0.45. Then travel by train, the probability is 0 0.7. So this is 0 0.7 here. And of course, this is 0 0.3, not not late to work. Okay, then by car, the travel probability late is x. So you just write as x. Ah. So for not going late is 1 minus x. Okay, so this is the tree, di <coughs> tree diagram that I can use to help me okay, to visualize the overall picture better. Right, okay, then now to find the value of x, <coughs> of course, we need to have a uh, information to start with. Lah. So they actually give us this information here. The probability that she does not arrive late is 0 0.48. So from this information, I know that she is not late to work. Eh? Not late means late bar, right? Okay. It is equals to 0 0.48. Okay, so this is actually the information that they give us now to start with. Alright. Okay, so now um what how can I find the value of x? So first of all, you need to put in all the calculation from not arrive late. So what are the different pathways that I should include in my calculation? So if let's say not going to be late, you start from 0 0.4 and then not going to be late is this one. This is a complete first case uh, for not going to be late. It will be 0 
multiply with 0 0.45. Right, so when you want to start with another new cases here, then you have to add them. All right, so what is the next cases or next case for not going to be late? So the next case will be by train and then not going to be late. So from here, you can see very clearly that the probability is 0 0.35 and then multiply with 0 0.3. Okay, so do we have another case or not for not going to be late? So the third one is by car and then not going to be late. Right, so by car and not going to be late, the probability will be 0 0.25 multiplied with 1 minus x. And all this calculation here, the total should be equal to 0 0.48 because we have included all the cases with not going to be late. Okay, from our tree diagram. And then we include here in our calculation already. Now. All right, so the we will let it equal to 0 0.48. Okay, so from here, from this um, step, you can try to simplify. You can press the calculator and try to simplify it. And eventually, you will get 0 0.25, okay, multiply with 1 minus x, and it will be equal to 0 0.195. Okay, then if you continue further, then your x, you should able to get 0 0.22. Alright, so this will be my answer for the value of x. So this is part A. Alright, then now we continue to part B. Okay, so for part B, okay, maybe I will put it here. Alright, so for part B, they want you to find the probability that... Uh, she travels to work by train, given that she arrives late. So again, uh, maybe I want you to highlight the word key, given that. So the this is an important keyword. Now. Given that actually help us that we are having a conditional probability. Alright, so given that means slash, then she arrived late. Okay, so that means we already know uh, at first place uh, that she's late. And I want to know what is the probability that she goes to work by using train. Okay, so this is a conditional probability question. So train slash late, generally the formula will be train. Okay, intersect with late. Then divided by the probability of late. Okay, so how to get the train intersect? late probability. So again, you can refer to the tree diagram just now. So train intersect with late. So that means this is the outcome that you have. Alright, so include in our calculation, it should be 0 0.35 multiplied with 0 0.7 divided by the probability of late. So I will use this information in part 1 just now. Okay, so in part 1 just now, we know that not going to be late is 0 0.48. So, to get the probability of being late is 1 minus 0 0.48. Okay, so from here, very easily, you can get the answer which is 49 over 104. Or you can change it become 3 significant figure which is 0 0.471. So, this is our answer for part number B. Right, so we come to question number 4. Okay, so uh, we, have, we have a fair spinner has sides number 1, 2, 2. So there are three sides here. Another fair spinner has sides number negative 2, 0, and 1. Then each spinner is spun. The number of the on the side on which a spinner comes to rest is noted. So the random variable x is the sum of the number for two spinner. So they want you to draw up a probability distribution table for x. Okay, so for this question, generally it is very obvious that it belongs to um, discrete random variable. So the x is the sum of the numbers for the two spinners. Alright, so again, when we want to draw up the probability distribution table for x, there are many ways that we can do it. Uh, first of all, you should know that we have two spinners here, and both of them are actually the fair, the fair spinner. Okay, so uh, when we are talking about the sum, or maybe we should say like this, uh, we are having when we are having two spinners, two dice, um, two coins, or maybe two objects, uh, that show you some certain result one. Huh? Usually when we want to get the, the combination, I mean the, the combined result from these two items, for me, I will draw the possibility space diagram. Right? Okay, so to draw the possibility space diagram, it is something like this. Huh? 
Okay, so we are having the two spinner here. Okay, so maybe for this one, I will put it as the first spinner. So first spinner, I'm having three values. I will have one, then two, and also the two. Okay, then for the second spinner, the result that show for second, spin, uh, second spinner will be negative two, zero, then one. All right, so for the discrete random variable x, uh, they are asking for the sum of the numbers for the two spinner. All right, so what are the sum? Okay, so let's say for this particular cell here, this one. Okay, so for this particular cell, what is the sum for these two values? One and negative two. So one plus negative two, you get negative one. Okay, all right, so this is how we actually show them the result here, all right? Okay, so this first cell here will be negative one. Okay, so we go down. Okay, so one plus zero, I get a one. One plus one, I get a two. So all the numbers in the purple color here denotes the value for the x later. Okay, then we go to the second column. So negative two plus two, you get a zero. Then two plus zero, you get a two. Two plus one, you get a three. Same thing happened here. So negative two plus two, you get a zero. Zero plus two, you get a two. One plus two, you get a three. So in this possibility space diagram, since all the spinner are fair spinner, right? Okay, so you're having nine results here. Okay, so all the results are, are the same, are having the same probability because we are having the fair spinners. All right, okay, so very obvious. What we can do now is we can start to draw the possibility space diagram. Sorry, the, uh, the probability distribution table. Okay, so to show the probability distribution table, generally we are having um, x with the probability in the table form. Okay, so the smallest value for the x is negative 1, followed by 0, and then we are having 1, 2, and 3. Okay, now we want to fill in the probability. So for negative 1, out of the 9 boxes here, right, the 9 results here, you have only one value with negative 1. So the probability will be 1 over 9. For 0, it will be 2 over 9. For the 1, it will be 1 over 9. Okay, for 2, there are 3 2s here, right, in the result. So I'm having 3 over 9. Then 2 over 9 for the values of 3. Okay, so to ensure that your answer is not wrong, maybe you can double check and see. If you try to start, uh, try to add or try to find the sum for all the p here, is it equals to 1 or not? So if let's say it is equals to 1, then very likely your answer should be a correct one. All right, so this is how you draw the probability distribution table for the x. All right, so for this, um, for this question, I'm using the possibility space diagram where I try to list out all the results and then I get the probability by looking at how many boxes I have here over the total. All right, so this is possibility space diagram and this is the probability distribution table for the x. All right, then now let us continue to part number two. So for part number two, they want us to find the mean and also the variance. All right, so once you have the table already uh, for the distribution table, probability distribution table for x, then it's very easy for us to calculate the ex and also the variant x. So ex is the mean, variant x is variant x. Huh? Right. Okay. So um, we can start now for part number B. To find the ex, generally you multiply all the x with the p together and you add them. So we are having this. So negative one multiply with one over nine. Then plus the next value for x will be zero, multiply with two over nine and so on. So 1 multiply with 1 over 9, then 2 multiply with 3 over 9, and also 3 multiply with 2 over 9. Alright, so when you write out the steps correctly, and if you didn't do any careless mistake, then you should get 4 over 3 as the value for the mean. Okay, then next we will, we will want to proceed to get the variance. So before I get the variance, I will try to find out the x squared first. So ex squared means that you square the x, then only you multiply it with the p. So as example, I'm having negative 1, then I square it, multiply with p. 
Okay, then the next value is 0 square, then you multiply with P. So you do the same thing for the rest of the value of X. Okay, so once you um, press the calculator correctly, right, the answer that you get should be 32 over 9. Okay, so please take note, this is not the variance yet. This is not the value for variance. Okay, but it is only the value that we need to calculate the variance later. Alright, so to get the variance value, the variance for the x, generally the formula will be ex squared minus the mean square. Okay, so ex squared is 32 over 9, like what you calculate just now, minus the mean. So the mean will be 4 over 3 square in the earlier part just now. Okay. And eventually, of course, the answer that you get should be 16 over 9. Alright, so this is the value for variance x. Okay, so we come to question number 5. Alright, so um, question number 5 talking about this. Every day, Richard takes a flight between these two places. And then on any day, the probability that the flight arrive early is 0 0.15. Arrive on time is this. And also the arrived late is 0 0.3. Okay, so find the probability on each of the three randomly chosen days Richard's flight does not arrive late. Okay, so for this question, right, um, I don't know whether you can see the the, the, the structure of the question or not. But in general, they say each means every day, okay, each of the three randomly chosen days. So that means uh, uh, you are having a total number which is 3, right? And then every day from these 3 days, the flight does not arrive late. So um, usually when we are having this structure, this kind of structure of the question, uh, generally it belongs to binomial distribution. Okay, but of course for this question, if you didn't look at it by using binomial distribution, you still can get the answer. Alright, but I try to link it with binomial because of the, the structure of the question itself. Huh? Because you are having originally 3 randomly chosen dates. So for this question, they are asking for each of the three chosen days. Uh, but this each, uh, you can change it, become like two days. Okay, two of three randomly chosen days, then the flight does not arrive late. Or maybe one of three randomly chosen days, the flight does not arrive late. So generally, this belongs to a binomial distribution question. Okay, so for me, I will just write it out as x is binomial distributed. Alright, so the total number of n the value of n is 3 and then the flight does not arrive late so for the p value i should put in the probability that the flight does not arrive late so early is 0 0.15 on time is 0 0.55 okay so from this case here you can see that does not arrive late means that it will be 0 0.15 plus 0 0.55 okay so the probability should be 0 0.7 okay so 0 0.7 or you can take 1 minus the probability of arrive late nah. so 1 minus 0 0.3 you also get 0 0.7 so for this question actually they want us to calculate the probability for x equals to 3 because each of the three randomly chosen days right Okay, so for x equals to 3, what is the formula for binomial distribution? Generally, it will be n, c, r, p power r, q power n minus r, where you should know that the n is a 3 in our case here, and then the value of p is 0 0.7. Okay, so when I want to get x equals to 3, it will be n, c, r, so 3, c, 3, p power 3. Q is 0 0.3, so Q power 0. Okay, so from here, you can just press the calculator and try to get the answer. The final answer that you should get is 0 0.343 uh, into 3 significant figures. So this is my part 1. Alright, so if let's say you didn't link it with binomial distribution, you just write out 0 0.7 power 3, you can also get the answer correctly. Okay, then now we continue to part number B. Alright, so for part number B, they ask you to find the probability that 
on nine randomly chosen days, Richard's flight arrived early at least three times. Okay, so again, you are having nine randomly chosen day, and now they are looking for arrive early. So the probability of arrive early, you should put it in at the parameter of the value for P, which is 0 0.15. And then they said at least three times out of the nine randomly chosen days. Okay, so which means that if you want to write out the probability, calculate the probability, it should be x greater equals to 3, at least 3 times. Alright, so we are still using the binomial concept to solve it. Okay, so for x greater equals to 3, you can start from x equals to 3, x equals to 4, x equals to 5, until x equals to 9, which is the maximum value for the n. Okay, but it is a bit too long for me, so you can do it in the other way around. That means you take 1 minus the probability for x smaller than 3 which means you will have 1 minus x smaller than 3 means you will have x equals to 0 which is 9c0 0, 0 0.15 power 0 0 0.85 power 9 you should also minus um, x equals to 1 so 9c1 0 0.15 power 1 0 0.85 power Okay, you also should exclude x equals to 2. So x equals to 2 means 9c2, 0 0.15 power 2, 0 0.85 power 7. Alright, so they want to include the 3 in their calculation, so we shouldn't exclude the 3. Lah. So we should minus 0, x equals to 0, x equals to 1, and also x equals to 2. So from this step, you should be able to get the answer, which is 0. 1, 3, oh, sorry, 1, 4, 1. Okay, so this is what we have for question number 5b. Then we continue to part C. Okay, so for part C, alright, so if you try to have a look for the detail here, then now they are saying that I am having 60 days. 60 days are chosen at random. So use an approximation. So here they give you a very obvious keyword. Uh, right? Approximation to find the probability that uh, his flight arrived early at least 12 times. Okay, so it is still under binomial distribution. 60. All right, and then... Um, what are they interested for? They, they are still interested for the um, events that the flights arrive early. So the flight arrives early, we are still putting in the probability for the early probability, lah, so which is 0 0.15. Okay, so now you're having a very large value for n in binomial distribution. And also they already give you a very obvious keyword here, lah, use an approximation. To find the probability which means that from this binomial distribution you should try to change it become normal distribution okay so that our calculation steps will be easier also all right okay so how to change it become normal distribution you have to take the mean here first parameter value is the mean right how to get the mean from binomial distribution it will be 60 multiply with 0 0.15 so the mean value is actually 9 Okay, so this is your mean value for the normal distribution and the variance will be n multiplies with p multiplied with q. So npq will be 60 multiplied with 0 0.15 multiplied with 0 0.85. So the value for variance that you get here should be 7.65. Alright, so this is the mean and also the variance. Alright, so this is how we get the value from binomial to normal. Then we continue with what they want us to calculate. So they said the flight arrived early is at least 12 times. So that means they want you to calculate the probability for x at least means greater equals equals the 12. So greater equals to 12. Okay, so this is originally from binomial. When you change it become normal distribution from discrete, you want to change it become continuous random variable, right? 
So what you need to do is that you have to do continuity correction. So for x greater or equals to 12, the continuity correction okay, should move um, 0 0.5 earlier, which is 0 point, uh, 11.5. Right, then again, after you do the continuity correction, you have to change it become Z now because you know that um, it is now normally distributed. Okay, so you take the value of X minus the mean. So again, minus the mean means minus the 9 divided by standard deviation, which is the square root of 7.65. Alright, and... Press calculator and try to get the z value until three decimal places. You should get 0 0.904. Okay, so now you want to use the normal distribution table to get the answer. So how can I get the value for 0 0.904? Alright, so this is again a table that we have from our formula booklet. Alright, so maybe I make it slightly smaller also. Okay, so now they are asking for z greater than 0 0.904. Okay, so if you have the idea about the diagram of a normal distribution, right? Okay, we want to get this value. So this area, which is 0 0.904. But for information, in our table, they give us the area for this part. Okay, so... If you want to take greater value, so you have to take 1 minus, then you look for 0 0.904. So this is 0 0.9, 0, and then 4. 0 0.90, you get this one. Okay, then for the 4, you have a 10. So then, that means I have to take 8, 1, 5, 9, plus 10. So you get 8. 169. So that means when you want to calculate the final answer, you take 1 minus 0 0.8169 and the probability value should be 0 0.1381 and usually I will change it become 3 significant figure which is 0 0.183 and this is how we calculate and get the answer for this probability. Alright, so uh, we are coming to question number 6. Okay, so they want you to find the total number of different arrangements. So um, to me, arrangement will be a keyword. When you see the word arrangement, uh, generally the, your steps will involve uh, MPR or maybe something with factorial. Okay, so that all related to the arrangement uh, of the 8 letters in the word tomorrow. Okay, so for the word tomorrow, there are 8 letters. Alright, then from here you will realize that there are 3 O. 3 O and also 2 R. Then you have 1 T, 1 M, and also 1 W. Okay, so from here you can see um, the 8 letters, alright? Okay, then when they're asking for arrangement for 8 letters, so that means you want to arrange 8 objects, you will have 8 factorial. From these eight factorials, <coughs> for the word tomorrow, uh, you will realize that there are some identical letters. Alright, so the identical letters means that you're having 3 O and also 2 R, which means that in your calculation for the number of arrangement, you have to divide it by 3 factorial and also 2 factorial. Okay, for all the identical cases. Uh. Right, so divided by 3 and 2 factorial respectively, then you have 3, 3, 6, 0. As our first answer here for part number A. Alright, then continue to part B. Okay, so for part B, they want us to find the total number of different arrangement again. So you can highlight the word arrangement one more time. Okay, of the eight letters in the word tomorrow that have an R at the beginning and also R at the end. Just now we know that we are having two R's here, right? So one R at the beginning and one R at the end. So which means there's no more R in the center part, okay? And in which the three O's are not all together. Okay, so maybe we can try to write out our cases for now. We are having two let uh, eight letters, right? R in front and R at the back. So that means you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Okay, so the R and the R here are fixed. That means we are not going to consider any arrangement about the R anymore. They are fixed here. Okay, and we want to focus on the arrangement for T, M, W, and also O, O, O in our center part here. And then uh, they have one restriction where they say the three O are not all together. So not all together means that um, they are not next to each other. Uh, sorry, I should say like not all together means that uh, the O can be one O separate from the other two O. Okay, or maybe we can say that the meaning is all together, the complement case of all together. Okay, all right. So not all together doesn't mean that they are all separated. Uh. All right, it can be included the case of one O and then two O together. All right, one O is separated and then the other two O are together. All right, so to calculate this restriction here, to make it easier, uh, all right, to make it easier, what am I going to do is like, uh, I will try to consider all the O are together. So when you want to arrange all the O are together, how can we do the calculation? Okay, so we are having T, M, W, and since I want to make all the O together, so I will assume that all this will be bundled together, become one uh, object or one item. So now you want to arrange one, two, three, four, four items here. So the value will be four factorial. Okay, and if I want to arrange uh, T, M, W, O, 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 the six letters without restriction, okay, so how can I arrange these six letters here without any restrictions? So the, form, the answer will be 6 factorial divided by 3 factorial. So why do we need to divide it by 3 factorial? Because the 3 O here are identical. So we, in, uh, when we arrange them uh, separately, right? Okay, uh, we, when we treat them as a single item, each of the single item here, so they are identical. Therefore, in the calculation for arrangement, you have to divide it by 3. 3 identical O, therefore you have to divide it by 3 factorial. Okay, so now, for our question, for this part, they want us to calculate the three O's are not all together. So the number of arrangement for the answer will be, you have to take, okay, so you have to take without restriction one, which is six, six factorial divided by three factorial minus all of them are together minus the four factorial. Okay, so this is actually the correct way. So the answer will be 96. Okay, so uh, it is a bit tricky at this part of the question. They are asking for O's are um, not all together. So the easier way is you calculate the number of ways where O are all together. Then you take without restrictions one minus they are all together. So you can get not all together arrangement. Alright, so please read the question very carefully at this part. Alright, okay, then now we continue to part number C. Alright, so now we discuss the question number 6, part C. Alright, so now they are asking for um, four letters. Uh, they want to select four letters. Okay, so you can see the word selected. So when you see the keyword selected, uh, mainly we will actually using the combination, something like NCR. Okay, at random from the eight letters of the word tomorrow. So from the word tomorrow, you want to select four letters out. And then what is the restriction here? And what is the question that they want us to, they, they want to ask? So find the probability that the selection contains at least one O and at least one R. Okay, so um, here, this is the restriction. Uh, the at least one O and at least one, one, would, uh, one R will be the restriction. Okay, then uh, because of they involve the probability, 
on combination. All right, so uh, first of all, you need to know what is the total, total combination or total number of ways without restriction. Without restriction. All right, so um, because of they want us to involve the probability. Lah. Okay, so when you want to select uh, all the word O and R here, we need to assume that they are all um, not identical. Or maybe we can say that we assume that they are not identical because of we need to consider all the probability that the O and the R appear because we are having three O here, right? In the word tomorrow and also two R in the word tomorrow. So actually we are having a higher chance okay, to get the probability of O and also the probability of R. All right, so when you want to calculate the probability, the probability on combination, all right, generally we uh, need to assume or maybe we have to treat all the letters here uh, different so that we actually consider uh, all the words, okay, all the repeated letters here with their probability. Okay, so for total ways without restriction, we are having eight letters in total and we want to select only four, therefore it will be 8C4. Okay, so this value will be our denominator later. All right, so if you if I didn't do any calculus mistake, then this one should be 70. All right, so 8C4 equals to 70 and this will be our denominator later. All right, then now we focus on the number of ways or the probability that contains at least one O and also at least one R. All right, so for this one, maybe we need to list out uh, different cases. All right, because uh, we have, they request for at least one O and at least one R. So maybe for the first case, what am I having here is I have one O and one R with another two other letters. So the two other letters here, I will exclude the O and R. So that means the two letters here, I will consider it from the letters T, M, and also W only. Right, because you have T, M, W, which is not, uh, there's no repeated letters here. And then you have three O, and then you have two R, right? Okay, so for all the line that I draw like this, uh, it means that uh, I only consider the three letters from T, M, and W. Okay, because I don't want to include all the O and R in the combination. It is because of I want to list out all the cases later that includes all the cases for O and R. Right, so the first case is one O and one R only. Right, so the one O and one R and then two letters from this group T, M and W. Okay, so to get one O, because of we are having three O's in total. All right, and you want to calculate the probability. Therefore, um, to get the O, you have 3C1. All right, then multiply with the R. So we are having 2R in total. And then you need to consider, okay, the number of times that the R will appear, which is 2C1. And then multiply with 3C2. So the 3C2 means that from these three letters, I want to select two letters to fill in. All right, so this is my first case. All right, then the second case. So for the second case, maybe I want to consider 2O, 1R, and also one letter from TMW. Okay, when I want to select 2O, it will be 3C2. When I want to have 1R, it will be 2C1. Multiply with the other letter, which is 3C1. Okay, then how about for the third case? So you need to try to list out all the possible cases that we have. Uh, all right, so maybe for the third case, I might have 2O and also 2R. Okay, so to get the 2O, I will have 3C2. To get the 2R, I will have 2C2. Okay, so from here, I get another answer. This is case number three. Okay, case number four. What are the possible uh, results that we have at least one O and also at least one R? Okay, so maybe we are having the two, three O and one R. Okay, so for 3O, I will have 3C3 multiply with 1R, so it will be 2C1. Okay, and then for the case number 5, is there any other possible cases? Uh, maybe I should consider 1O and also 2R. 
then with one other letter. All right, so if one O, I'm having three C one, multiply with two R will be two C two, and then one letter from T M W, then it will be three C one. Okay, so from here, I try to list out all the possible cases that I have for at least one O and also at least one R. Alright, so um, if you try to um, go through this now, you will see that these are the five cases that I have. Alright, with the uh, restrictions that uh, at least one O and also at least one R. Okay, so now we are going to simplify all the answer that we have. Lah. All right, so the first case, 3C1 is 3, 2C1 is 2, then 3C2 is a 3 also, and therefore we have 18 for the first case. Okay, then for the second case, it will be 3, multiplied with 2, multiplied with 3, so also 18. How about for the third case? So the third case will be 3C2, multiplied with 2C2, which is a 1, and therefore you get a 3. All right, then 3C3 is a 1. 2C1 is a 2, you get a 2 for the 4th case. And after that, for the 5th case, you are having 3 multiplied with 1, multiplied with 3, and therefore you get a 9. Alright, so now, these are all the possible cases, huh? alright, for the restrictions, right? At least one O and also at least one R. Therefore, before we can get the probability, you need to total up all the five cases here and we are having 50. All right, so what is the probability? So for probability, it will be the number of ways with the restriction divided by the number of ways without restrictions and therefore you should get 5 over 7 as your answer for this part. Okay, so we come to the last question here. Okay, for question number seven. All right, so um, they mentioned that we are having 11 basketball players in two clubs. All right, so we have clubs, Amazon and also Giants. Okay, so these are the heights, okay, of the basketball players in CN. Okay, so first question here, <coughs> they want us to state an advantage of using the stem and leaf diagram. Okay, compared to a box and whisker plot to illustrate the information. All right, so the, <coughs> the very big advantage uh, for the stem and leaf diagram is it can actually show all the data. All right, so you can write it like this. Uh, so the stem and leaf diagram displays all data. Okay, so you, lo you won't lose any information from the stem and leaf diagram. All right, you can still see every single data very clearly from the stem and leaf diagram. Okay, then now you continue to part number two. Okay, so for part B, they want us to um, represent the data by drawing a back-to-back -back stem plot uh, or back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram. Okay, so maybe for this one, back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram with amazons on the left-hand side of the diagram. Okay, so since they want us to have a major on the left-hand side, uh, okay, back-to-back -back stem plot means that we are having the stem in the center. Okay, so this is the stem. And then amazons on the right, on the left, right? So amazons should be here. Okay, and then the right-hand side should be giants. Alright, so now first of all, we should actually uh, decide what are the value for the stamps it should be included first. Okay, so you should uh, run through uh, all the value here to see what is the smallest um, value okay, for the stamp and what is the largest value for the stamp. Alright, so if I run through here, uh, I will see that the 215 is actually the largest value among these two um, clubs. Then I think the smallest value <coughs> should be this one. This is the smallest value among the two uh, between the two clubs, and this is the largest value, 215. Okay, so that means uh, for my stamps here, the smallest stamp value should be 17, then followed by 18, 19, 20, until 21. All right, then you start to fill in 
all the leaf into the stem and leaf diagram. <clears throat> so as an example for organisms, 205. All right, so the first value is 205. That means you should put a 5 under the 20. Okay, and so on. All right, so you try to fill in every single value one by one. And eventually for the answer that you get now, uh, for this stem and leaf diagram, it should look something like this. Uh. So for a measure, you have 178. Then we have 181, 182, 184. Then you have 0, 6, 8. Then you have 1, 2, 5. And also 5 here. This is the data that you get from a major club. Then for Giants Club, you should have 5. And then for the STEM 80, you should have 2, 4, 7, 9. <clears throat> for 19, you have 2, 3, 5, 5, 5. <clears throat> for 20, you have the 4. Okay, then I think for giants, you don't have any height which is more than 21, 210. Okay, so the general stem and leaf diagram will look something like this. But of course, don't forget to include the key for your stem and leaf diagram. Okay, so usually I will simply take any value. Okay, so maybe I will take 1 slash 18, then 2. So denotes what? So denotes 181 cm for Amazon clubs. Okay, and then um, 182 cm for giants. Okay, or you can... You can write for players from Giants or for players from Amazons uh, if you want it to be more detailed. Okay, so this is what we have for our part B. Right, so please make sure that you always include the key, okay, either below or beside your back to back, your stem, stem and leaf diagram. All right, okay, then we continue further to part C. Okay, so for part C, they want you to find the interquartile range. Uh, of the players in the Amazons. Alright, so to find the interquartile range, you need Q1 and also Q3. Okay, we are having 11 data in total. Alright, so you should know that if I want to separate it into two different parts, uh, the first part should have five data. Then this is your median, Q2, and then you have 5 data after the median. So 5 data plus Q2 plus 5 data at the end, you have 11 data in total. Okay, then I want to find out the Q1. So the Q1 will be median for this part. So Q1 is actually the median for the first 5 data here, and Q3 is actually the median for the second part, the last five digits, the last five data. Okay, so the first five data you're having 178, first one, second, third, fourth, fifth. So among these five values here, where's the center or where's the median for these five values? So it should be the third one. So the third one here should be one eight. So you have 182 as your Q1. Okay, then after that, you refer to the last five. So last, last five is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Start from 198, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So where is the standard of 198, 201, 202, 205, 215? Okay, so you're having five values here. The center value will be the third one also like, after the 198, so which is 202. Therefore, to get the IQR, it should be 202 minus 182, and you get 20 as your inter quarter range. Okay, then now we come to the very last part of this question. Okay, so there are four new players join the emergence and then the mean height, okay, they give you some information here, like the mean height is 
uh, for 15 players now is 191.2 and the heights of three of the new players are listed as these three values. They want you to find the height for fourth new player. Okay, so now I need to find out the summation of the height. So maybe I write a summation of x. Huh? Okay, so the summation of x from Amazons, which means that you need to actually add in, or maybe you need to find the sum for all the height okay, from Amazons team. Okay, so you should try to find out, and the answer should be three. Uh, sorry, 2132. Okay, and then since they tell you that you're having a new mean, right? When you add in the four members, huh, you're having the new mean. So new mean will be, you take the old summation plus the four new members height. And the last one, you don't know. Lah, so you just maybe just put it as A, no? Okay, then divided by, now your total become 15. Okay, and what is the new mean now? So the new mean is actually 191.2. And when you try to add up all the values that you get now from your um, steps, you have 2687 plus A divided by 15. Okay, so what is the height for the fourth member or the fourth player here? Um, if you didn't do any careless mistake, then you should get the value for A, which is 181 cm. Right, so here we ended this 